Hey, how's it going? It's Jasper from No More Codes here. In today's software tutorial, we're going to learn how to use user groups and visibility to dynamically display content to different users. In software, there are two default user groups that come out of the box, um, logged in users and non-logged in users. And here is a quick example of how uh, we can use these two user groups and dynamically display different headers. Um, we have two versions of headers here. Um, for non-logged in users, we want them to sign up or log in. So we would dis display this version uh, with two buttons for uh, users to sign up or log in. And we can do so by clicking on the header block and then go into I icon, click on the I icon. In here, we can set only the non-logged in users can see this header which means that this block is only visible to users who signed up but have not logged in um, or visitors who have not even signed up yet. And for users who have already logged in, um, log in and sign up buttons are pretty much ir irrelevant, pretty useless for them. Hence, um, instead of this header, we will display another version of this uh, with a user profile icon where a user can log out or go into their profile pages. Um, and we can set this visibility by first clicking on the block and then the eye icon. And in this case, we will set visibility to logged in users. And if we preview these, um, when I'm not logged in, which is now, um, I see the sign up or log in version of the header. Um, and now I'm gonna log in. I'm just gonna fast forward this part. Uh, and and you can see the header has changed for me and I now am seeing the version with a user profile icon instead. Note that um, back in the Software Studio editor, um, as I set this header to be visible to logged in users, we also enabled a setting here where you can see the plus icon here, um, where we can actually set visibility to custom user groups. And before we can set this visibility at, by ad adding a custom group, we first need to make uh, custom groups first. So we will go into settings, uh, user groups, uh, user groups and permissions. Um, and we go into user groups. Um, and in here, we can make our own custom user groups. Um, I have created some for previous tutorials, um, but if you're new, you should only have one, which is the logged in users. Um, now let's create a custom user group and we're gonna for this example we're gonna call that admins we're gonna make a custom user group for admins and of course we're gonna name it admins a, a very important concept right now uh, here you need to know is the difference between any and all um, you can actually make multiple conditions here to help you determine which users belong to this admin user group um, with any Let's say you have three conditions. We're gonna make three conditions later. And as long as one condition is met, these, the user will be included in this custom group. However, if here we pick all, um, a user has to meet all of the conditions that you have set here to be included in this custom group. Um, this is very useful for creating very niche and specific user groups. Um, yeah. So with this out of the way, um, let's create our conditions for admins and I'm going to select any uh, for our tutorial because I plan to make multiple conditions um, because uh, I want to show you different ways that you can set your custom user group. Um, the first way is by email or username. These two are pretty similar, um, which uh, usually is used when the admin user group is um, fairly small because uh, by using these two, that means you will need to manually input the name or the email of your admins. This way is um, this way is pretty robust in the way that uh, as long as you don't make any typo, um, uh, it would just make sure to lock everyone else other than the email or the name that you provided. Um, but this way is not really good when your user group is very large or it, it is not good when your user group is always changing. For example, you can have more admin users joining you. So you have to always change this part or uh, add more members in. Um, this is why we have a second way, which is um, by using a email domain. 
Um, this means that by using an email domain, this means that everyone who is signed up with a uh, specific email domain, or usually an organization email domain, um, those users will all become admin if we have we use email domain uh, as a filter. Um, however, this use case is not very common for uh, admin users because usually in a uh, organization you want admin users and you also want um, other type user types. Um, so usually when you use email domains, when you have many users from many organizations on your platform, an email domain is a very effective way to quickly group users by organizations and also um, uh, verify if users are actually from a specific organization group by their email domain. So uh, email domain usually is not for admin cases, but I um, just want to show you just in case it actually uh, uh, is what you want. Um, and here comes the third way uh, to set a custom user group, um, which is my most recommended way because it's so very versatile, very flexible. Um, it is actually by setting up a data field in your user air table, um, like so. Uh, if you go into, uh, I'm showing you the user data table that I currently, um, uh, this uh, application is currently connected to in Airtable. And this field, I call that type. Uh, it is a single select field that helps me track if a user is a normal user or if it's a, uh, if, it, if the user is an admin user. So for a normal user, this field would be blank. And for an admin user, the user will have a, um, the field will be populated with admin as a value here. Um, with this field, we can set our condition in software to be logged in users type. Um, type is the one I made in my Airtable database. Um, this logged in users type, it's admin. And we will set this up uh, right here. Now with this user group set up, we can come back to the header part and make one header that uh, it's specifically for just admin users. And for this header, we will use the same profile icon setup, um, but with an extra link for admins to submit new cafes to the platform. This basically means that uh, if you're not an admin, you are not gonna see this header, that means you can't submit new cafes to the platform. Um, and we can set the visibility up with the same drill that we presented before. Click, click on the block first, click on the eye icon, and then set it to logged in user first. And then we add a custom group, which is the admin group that we just made. Now, if we go into preview, we can see that um, I don't have the submit cafe link. It is because um, in the user database, I am not a, my, this account is not an admin yet. Uh, okay, let's go into the database and set my, the account I'm currently using to the user type to admin. And if we refresh now, we can see that I now have the link to submit new cafes, which means that our setup is successful. And there you have it. Um, this is how you can dynamically display blocks, contents on your software application uh, with user groups and visibility settings. I uh, hope this video helped. Um, and if it did, please like, subscribe, um, and comment down below. Let me know what you want to learn next and I'll make a video for that. Um, I also do offer consultation. So if you need more help or, or more um, specific uh, bespoke need, um, feel free to book, uh, book a consultation with me. Uh, you can contact me by my website down below or even my email address. Um, until then, ciao.